Well, hello everyone. I'm back with a new series of videos covering chapters of Geography, Class 11, and CRT. Chapter 3 Drainage System. So this is a very interesting chapter and again very important from examination point of view. So in this chapter we will read about where the rivers originate from, what are the shapes of the river, how did they get that shape, where do they drain into and why are rivers draining into western side and eastern side. So what is a drainage? A drainage is a well defined channel sort of a thing which helps in the flow of water through one place to another. And the network of such channel is called a drainage system. Just imagine that pipe as the river bed through which the river water flows and those connection of pipes that is the system drainage system as the tributaries of the river. So when you imagine this, this is what we mean by drainage system and this is what we are going to read in this chapter. When a river drains the water collected from a specific area, that area is called catchment area. When an area is drained by a river and its tributaries, it is called a drainage basin. A watershed is the boundary line between each drainage basin. And the catchment area, that is, the source of the river where the water is collected or where the water is initially formed, is called a river basin. However, there is a slight difference between a river basin and a watershed. Watersheds are small in area, while the river basins cover larger area. Just think of it this way, uh, watersheds, the meaning of watershed is shedding the water. So it has to be in portions and there has to be small, small areas. And whereas river basin, which is the source of the river, it can be due to the melting of ice or collection of water through rainwater. It has to be a huge portion of land where the entire water from the rain is stored in a tank sort of a thing. So consider this way, it is an easy way to remember. River basin is like a water tank which is larger in area and watersheds are nothing but small small portions where the water is collected a small tank yeah watershed is of a small tank now let's understand the various patterns of our drainage so the first pattern is called dendritic I'll just show you what dendritic is have a look at this map so this area is the northern plain just see the river system over here everything is like a root sort of a thing tree root so this form is nothing but dendritic so the second type of drainage pattern is the radial. What is the meaning of radial? So you must be familiar with radial tires. So they look like something like this. So this is the center and then you have these pattern going 90 degree from the center if you can see this. So this is nothing but the design of a radial tire. Similarly, a radial drainage pattern is something like this. This is the center and everything is going in a straight direction from the center to anywhere it can go. So this is the whole pattern. This is what is radial. So whenever this kind of term comes, try to remember that radial tire example and you'll get it very clearly. And the third type of drainage pattern is called the trellis. So trellis are nothing but when the primary tributaries of rivers flow parallel to each other and then the secondary tributaries which come out of these primary tributaries they form right angle. The pattern is known as trellis. Fourth and the last type of drainage pattern is called the centripetal. Now you must have heard about centripetal force. What does it mean? A centripetal force is a force that makes a body follow a circular path and the direction of this force is towards a fixed point which is at the center of curvature of the path. So if you remember how in a radial pattern everything goes away from the center. Similarly in centripetal everything comes to the center. So in center there must be a small pond or a lake and all the tributaries fall in the center to form that lake. So this is nothing but a centripetal pattern of the drainage. Now the Indian drainage system may be divided in two categories that is the Arabian Sea drainage and the Bay of Bengal drainage. Now what makes the river break apart and fall into the following these two drainages. Now that is separated due to the Delhi Ridge, Aravali Range and Western Ghats. So if you look at this barrier sort of a thing, so this is the Delhi Ridge and this is the Aravali Range and then we have the Western Ghats. So this thing is blocking so many rivers to fall into the Arabian Sea and hence that is the reason everything is going towards the eastern side that is in the Bay of Bengal. So nearly 77% of the drainage area consisting of Ganga, Brahmaputra, Mahanadi, Krishna is oriented towards the Bay of Bengal while 23% of comprising the Indus Narmada, Tapi, Mahi, Periyar are discharged into the Arabian Sea. In case you are wondering why these two rivers Mahanadi and Krishna has been taken with Ganga and Brahmaputra. And the reason lies here. So here you have the Mahanadi and you have the Krishna. So if you see, they do not come from the mountains or the Himalayas. They are originated in the peninsula plateau itself due to precipitation or rainfall. The collection of rainwater is the reason Mahanadi and Krishna exist. And hence, whenever they get filled up, they go and flow towards the Bay of Bengal. And when there is no rain, the flow of water is less. So now you know where all the rivers drain, but you also need to know where they originate from. 
So now the Indian drainage can be classified into two types. That is the Himalayan drainage and the peninsula drainage. So as we know that many river have their sources in the Himalayas and discharge their water either in Bay of Bengal or Arabian Sea. The reason it's Himalayas is because of the snow glaciers which melts and forms water. And then there are rivers which have their origination in peninsula plateau. That is due to the rainfall and precipitation which collects water and that's how few of the rivers over there are formed. So let's go ahead and read about the Himalayan drainage. So it mainly consists of the Ganga, Indus and Brahmaputra. And these three rivers are mainly formed by melting of snow or precipitation which is nothing but rainfall. And these rivers are also perennial. The meaning of perennial is which flows continuously. It means it never dries off. So while making the journey from the Himalayas to the plain areas, it has to go through giant gorges and a lot of erosional activity had to be carried out. These rivers also form V-shaped valleys. So when these rivers come down from the mountains of Himalaya to the plains, they bring along a large chunk of stones, pebbles, soil, etc. And mostly these rocks are nothing but sedimentary rocks. Uh, along this river bed, you will see a lot of pebbles and stones. So as time went by, a huge valley was created. So when the rivers entered the plains, they formed depositional features like flat valleys, oxball lakes, flood plains, braided channels and deltas near the river mouth. So in the Himalayas, the course of these rivers is highly tortuous. The meaning of tortuous is repeated turns. They are not straightforward. They are not direct. They are indirect. But the moment they come into the plain area, they display a strong meandering tendency. One good example is the river Kosi. It is also known as the sorrow of Bihar. It frequently changes its course. If a river frequently changes its course, it is prone to flood. Now let's read about the evolution of the Himalayan drainage. How did it came into existence? So many geologists believe that there was a mighty river called Shivalik or Indo-Brahma which traversed the entire longitudinal extent of the Himalayan from Assam to Punjab and then discharged into the Gulf of Sindh near Lower Punjab. Now we are talking about Miocene period which is 5 to 24 million years ago. And then in due course of time, this Indo-Brahma river was dismembered into three main drainage system. The Indus with five tributaries in the western part and Ganga and its Himalayan tributaries in the central part and the stretch of Brahmaputra in Assam and its Himalayan tributaries in the eastern part. Now you must be wondering that what is the reason behind the breaking of that uh, mighty Indo-Brahma river. So the reason behind that is the western Himalayan part and the Delhi Ridge part it was naturally uplifted due to which there was a division between the Indus river system and the Ganga river system. And on the eastern side near the Malda gap that is the area between the Raj Mahal hills in Jharkhand and the Meghalaya plateau the land over there was pushed down as a result it diverted the Ganga and the Brahmaputra system to flow towards the Bay of Bengal. Now let's talk about the river system of the Himalayan drainage. The Himalayan drainage system consists of three major river systems. They are the Indus river system, the Ganga river system and the Brahmaputra river system. Indus is one of the largest river basins of the world. Now in the westernmost side of Himalayan river near the Pakistan area, it is called as River Sindhu. But it originates from a glacier near Bukharchu, that is in the Tibetan region near the Kalash mountain range. From there, it flows towards the northwestern direction between the Ladar and Zaska ranges and then it cut across the Ladakh range forming a spectacular gorge near Gilgit in Jammu and Kashmir and then it finally enters into Pakistan near Chillar in the Dardistan region and then the Indus river finally drains into the Arabian Sea that is east of Karachi. The Indus flows in India only through the Leh district in Jammu and Kashmir. Now Jhelum, one of the tributary of Indus it rises at the foot of Pir Panjal in the southeastern part of the valley of Kashmir. Now even this river enters into Pakistan through Srinagar and the Vula Lake and then joins the river Chenab near Jhang in Pakistan. So that was all about the river Jhelum. Coming to the next river Chenab. It is the largest tributary of the Indus. It is formed by two streams, the Chandra and the Bhaga, which join at Tandi near Keelong in Himachal Pradesh. Hence, it is also known as Chandra Bhaga. The other name of Chenab is Chandra Bhaga. And even this river enters into the Pakistan. The next river is the Ravi. It is another important tributary of Indus. It rises west of the Rotang Pass in Kullu Hills of Himachal Pradesh. And from there, it passes through the Chamba Valley of the state before entering Pakistan and joining the Chenab near Sarai Sidhu. It drains the area lying between the southern eastern part of the Pir Panjal and the Dholadhar ranges. And the fourth tributary of river Indus is the river Bees. It is another important tributary of the Indus. It starts from the Bees Kund 
near the Rohtang Pass and then it flows through the Kullu Valley and forms gorges at the Kati, Largi in the Dhalodhar range. Now when it enters the Punjab plain, it meets the river Satlaj near Harike and the last tributary of Indus is the river Satlaj. It starts from Rakas Lake near Mansarovar. Now in Tibet, it is also known as Langchain Khambab. Now it almost flows parallel to Indus for about 400 km before entering India and then it passes through the Shipkila on the Himalayan ranges and enters the Punjab plain. It is an anti sindhan river. What is the meaning of anti sindhan It means pre-existing which is a referral of something else. So it is a very important tributary as it feeds the canal system of the Bhakra Nangal project. So remember Bhakra Nangal dam is built over the river Satlaj. With this, we have covered all the tributaries of the Indus river system. Now let's move on to the Ganga river system. So as we know, Ganga is the most important river of India. Well, it starts at the Gangotri glacier, which is near the Uttarkashi district of Uttarakhand. Now at this place, the name of Ganga is given as Bhagirathi. Then it cuts through the central and lesser Himalayas, forming narrow gorges. Now exactly at Dev Prayag, the Bhagirathi meets the Alakananda. And it is from here after it is known as Ganga. Then the river Ganga enters into the plain at Haridwar. Then from here it flows to the south, then to the southeast and east before splitting into two distributaries named as Bhagirathi and the Hugli. Now the river Ganga passes through four states that is Uttarakhand, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar and West Bengal. And then the river finally discharges itself into the Bay of Bengal near the Sagar Island. So next is the Brahmaputra system. The Brahmaputra is one of the largest river of the world. Its origin is in the Chema Yungdung glacier in the Kailash range near the Mansarovar lake. From here it goes to the region of southern Tibet where it is known as the river Sangpo which means the purifier and from there it goes to the central Himalayas near Namcha Barwa. There the name changes to Siang or Dihang. Then it enters India to the west of Sadia town in Arunachal Pradesh. From there it turns towards the west. From there it turns towards southwest where it receives main left bank tributaries like Dibang, Sikang and Lohit. And from there the Brahmaputra enters into Bangladesh near Dubri and goes towards southward region. And from there it finally falls into the Bay of Bengal. The Brahmaputra river is well known for flood and bank erosion and the reason behind this is because the tributary of Brahmaputra is large therefore it brings large quantity of stones boulders along with it from the mountains the next type of drainage system is the peninsula drainage system it is older than the Himalayan drainage system this is evident from the broad largely graded shallow valleys. So let's look at the difference between the Himalayan rivers and the peninsula rivers. So the Himalayan rivers originate from Himalaya and we know the reason behind it because of the melting of the ice and glacier which is found in Himalaya. And then this one originates from Deccan Plateau and Deccan Plateau lies below the northern plains. Then most of the Himalayan rivers are long. The reason it is long because if you look at the map you can see the distance uh, that needs to be covered from Himalaya and to the Arabian Sea and Bay of Bengal is much longer. Therefore, the rivers are long and in this case they are short because if you see the distance from the peninsula plateau to the Arabian Sea and Bay of Bengal the distance is comparatively short. Then Himalayan rivers are perennial. The meaning of perennial is it flows continuously throughout the year because uh, ice and ice and the glacier they melt throughout the year and these are seasonal because it heavily depends on the precipitation that is rainfall. Then most of the river basins are large. They have to be large because there is a lot of ice chunk that needs to be melted. Peninsula river have smaller basins because because they rely on rainfall and if there is no rainfall most of the rivers they just dry off. So this is the major differentiation between the two. So here are some name of the rivers that flow in the eastern side. Manadi, Godavari, Krishna and Kaveri they flow into the Bay of Bengal. And the rivers that flow into the west side that is in the Arabian Sea. Narmada, Tapti, Periyar. You can just have a look at this map and uh, I have pinpointed all these rivers. Just have a look at it. With this, we have come to an end of chapter 3. It was a long and important chapter from examination point of view. I hope you found this video informative. If you like the video, consider giving it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And make sure you are subscribed. You'll get an alert when my next video comes. Or if you want me to make anything specific, do let me know.